Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a DIY Dollar Tree farmhouse autumn decor with these acorn prints. We're also going to learn how to make splicing and nautical ropes. That's the most important part of the tutorial. We're going to use two of these acorns, but of course whatever shape you want. We're going to use this buffalo check blanket in gray and white, as well as some of the super microfiber car cloth chamois. I always call it a chamois, but that's what it reminds me of. Um, also, you're going to need some nautical rope. Now, this is a photo of the 13 foot, but we're actually going to use the nine and a half because it's a little narrower, but use what you have. We're also going to need a scissor as well as a hot glue gun. Now, you can just use the acorns. I wanted to just show you really quick how you can use an, two acorns, acorn and leaf. I really had wished that they would have came out with pumpkin shapes. Would have been gorgeous. I was thinking about a leaf and a pumpkin shape. Um, now, Megan from Glue Guns and Roses just did tags very recently. But um, my real inspiration for this was I have these little, like, wooden pieces on the end of a string that I got from collection, not collections, so LTD commodities, like, I'm going to say, I will, I will go ahead and say 30 years ago. And then what they were that you tied them around gift bags of wine and stuff. So, and I have them hanging in my office. And when we were cleaning the office the other day, I knocked them off and I picked them up. And on one side is a little house and the other side is a little tree. And, uh, I just thought that that was really like the perfect inspiration. Um, instead of just making tags. So I actually do have tags like Megan had, and I'm going to be making those up come Christmas time. Um, not quite as nice as hers, too two-sided, but, but I'm going to do my own thing. Um, but what I wanted to do then was to create these really fun, easy DIY for you. But this part is going to be super easy because the the actual tutorial that I really am dying to show you for a long time is how to splice two pieces of nautical rope together. And um, as you can see here, I've just laid a hot glue in the shape. I continued the shape of the acorn. To me, the acorn um, top went um, basically is the same shape as the bottom, but if you wanted it to be round and bulbous, you could have continued the circle around in like an oval. But for both of mine, I picked for it to be arched up like the top, okay? And for the first one, I glued the white on the acorn cap, and I used the or the seam, the already uh, the hem that they have. It's like a surged edge that they have on that white rag, um, and I used that as sort of like the seam for it. But I will show you here how um, I'm just going to show you different ways to finish it. So this one, I just glued it down. I left a little quarter of an inch um, glue line between. Um, the bottom of the white and where I actually glued the blanket down, laid the blanket flat, made sure I wanted my, my, my plaid would be straight. And then I just went back with some glue and curled it under, used a, a skewer just so I wouldn't get touch hot glue. And it's kind of uh, fine, fine, like very fine detail work there. Um, now I will show you in the next one that we're going to lay the gray one down first. Um, so it's just going to give you two different looks. And of course, I always like to give you guys options to see which look you like best or which one you think is easiest. I actually think this look is a little better, but that one is way easier. So I, I, I wanted to show you both. Okay, and then when you turn it over, you just glue right on the edge of your um, acorn board and fold it over. I was kind of like really really bad at myself because usually we like the wood pieces I like to stain them because they're wood um, but I just wanted to do something a little different and I, like I said a little easier for you guys because I really wanted this tutorial to be about the rope splicing <laughs> you know we use the nautical rope for so many different DIYs and whenever I see somebody use it for handles uh, not complaining everybody's handles you can do whatever works for you but every time I see them it reminds me of the spliced rope handles that my dad had on all his homemade buckets. Um, I am a fisherman's daughter. <laughs> this is how you actually splice rope when you're like fishing, but it's not the right measurements and stuff. Like there's a formula to how much splicing you need for what kind of rope and how well it holds and la 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 la. But this is just to create um, one continuous piece of, of rope and I'll show you that when we get to it. So now I'm just doing the opposite um, pattern with this second acorn. I'm putting the plant at the top and if you noticed I glued the arch down the same and then I 
sliced a little slice on both sides of the stem and tucked that in first uh, tucked it under and then I wrapped the rest around the top and sides and now I'm just going to take um, the white there and you can actually what I was rubbing with my finger you can't really see it but you can feel the glue line that I created um, when gluing down the the plaid so I just wanted to tell you go along that plaid and I used the same seam well not the same seam but I used the seam as well on this one and this one is actually going to go over the plaid so just like I said I want to show you the two different uh, methods this one is much easier just put your plaid down first and then cover it with your white um, and then repeat where you're going to go all the way around and this both these materials pull really nice so you won't have a lot of bulky stuff in the back um, you just trim it down so now you could be done right now or you can go ahead and put something on the back, a backing. Now, I wanted to hang these on my mudroom door, which is actually glass. So I wanted to be able to cover the back. I've just taken, I'm going to do one, I'll show you. Um, this is just a pillowcase from the Dollar Tree in dark gray. Um, I'm going to show you on half of it how we tucked under um, the seam. And then the other half, I'm going to show you how we just um, glued it and cut it. But here we are, we, I again set the glue line about a half an inch or an inch down, glued it down real quick and then tucked the, un, the top under and went around with glue again. Um, and I just did the first tacking just to help it uh, not move around. You might, have, you might be able to skip that part. But for the other side, I wanna show you if you just put your glue real close to the edge and then you can lay your fabric down and then just get a really good pair of scissors and cut really close um, so it doesn't look very jagged just make it look nice and neat and then um, this way the back is covered now I wanted to definitely cover mine with fabric but you could cover it with paper um, I just really wanted mine covered with fabric because it will hit the glass doors as the door slams now for the second one I wanted to show you we could just cover it with some more of that blanket normally I wouldn't waste a premium unicorn item like this but I happened to buy quite a few of them and we're going to do a big project with them um, a trash to treasure coming very shortly but I knew that I had a couple of extra that I could go ahead and play with so I just went ahead and I laid the corner down right at the bottom of the acorn uh, so I could utilize that seam and then this is on the bias which I thought would look really cute and then I went ahead and I just trimmed around the whole um, the whole entire acorn and I didn't put, um, either one of them, I didn't put any backing on the stem. Okay, just wanted to share that part with you too. Now, this is going to be no tools, and I have tools in air quotes right now because we're actually going to use a mini screwdriver, but we're not going to use any drills um, to put uh, holes in here, and I'll show you that in a second. But um, I also have these words. Now, you don't have to use these words. You don't have to use any words. These are the galvanized uh, three words that you get from the Dollar Tree. They have welcome, harvest, and thank you. And I'm just laying them out to show you guys how it looks on the plaid, how it looks together, how it looks with different words. And I just wanted to show you guys how that goes. So for the next step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the holes bigger. Um, actually, I'm going to make the one hole bigger. The, the one that's a plaid uh, with a white cap is actually going to hang in its natural hole that they drilled at the Dollar Tree. But the other one, we're going to go ahead and we're going to make the hole somewhere different. Because I kind of wanted them to hang like off-centered, like cattywampus, catty-cornered. Um, I may decorate these in the future with uh, acorns or leaves and stuff, but I just wanted to leave these plain because, again, I wanted this tutorial to mainly be about splicing the nautical rope, okay? So what I decided to do was figure out where I wanted to hang it, and I really wanted to hang it um, right, like so that thankful is e like straight. So I went ahead and I sealed up the hole that uh, came from the Dollar Tree just with a little hot glue, and I usually, <laughs> usually do that on my cool my cooling mat, my cutting mat, excuse me. Uh, but I forgot to put it down under there, so I ended up just taking it up off the table, scraping it with an old gift card and once it was dry sanded it and painted it so it would cover up and now I'm taking um, 
the, I took my scissor, I started a hole a little bit, then I figured out where I needed to cut the fabric. I just found it much easier to just snip the, snip a snip in the fabric and follow up with the screwdriver directly on the wood and I wouldn't have to worry about ruining the fabric. And when I got through the back, I pushed the screwdriver th through and then used the scissor just to cut the hole in the fabric in the back. Okay. And then I took my big scissor and I made the hole big enough for the folded piece of nautical rope to go through the hole. All right, and like I said, this is the nine and a half length, which I found to be much thinner. Um, so you may have to make your hole bigger if you use the 13 foot nautical rope as well. And of course, this is just merely an option. Um, you could just string the two of them together and be done with it. But what I really wanted to create was that, like I said, I wanted to mimic the look that I got with that little thing that was tied up. So what I did was I put the uh, the folded end between, I mean, from the front, and then I pulled the extra ropes through it to create that sort of fold over. But with the second um, acorn, because we already have the one end um, attached to something, it's it seems like it would be difficult, but it's not. So what you want to do is you want to push the folded end wherever you need it to be through and you want to pull it through a lot now what you actually want to do is to wrap it around your acorn and then once you have that done you see as you pull it through you're going to create that same sort of um, like knot that same sort of hitch on there okay now what I did do is before I started pulling them both even I made sure that I had the distance between the two acorns the length of rope that I wanted here's where you go ahead and adjust it and now to create the splice what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the two pieces that the two ends that are loose I'm going to cut each one of them with about a two three inch extra piece um, this can be adjusted at the end so um, don't stress out about measuring but what we're going to do is we're basically going to take each end of the rope and we're going to unravel them about three inches each. Okay, and then we're going to take the two Y's that it kind of creates like a Y, like a triangle almost. And we're going to just basically marry the two pieces together. So that each strand, there's three strands in each rope, each strand is not next to a strand from its same end, basically. So it's going to be like... A strand from the left hand next to a strand from the right hand and so on and so forth so now I'm going to take the three from the right hand and I'm just going to take a this is just a ponytail holder that I'm using just to cinch the three of them down just for a minute just to get them out of my way and I don't want them coming flying back at me and accidentally get the wrong one and then what we're going to do is we're going to basically take the strand as you as you'll notice when you have them the strands want to naturally lay next to a corresponding strand on the other side. What we're gonna do is we're gonna twist the rope open, take a strand from the one we're doing, which is basically one of those loose strands, and we're gonna go over the strand to, like that's above it. See how I'm working like with the, the rope going left to right? So we're gonna take a strand, we're gonna twist it, we're gonna go over the strand that's above it and under the one that's above that. I know that that sounded complicated, but really it's not. Um, but we're going to do some more so you can see. What we're essentially doing is weaving the ends of these ropes back into themselves. Um, so what you want to do, like I said, after you um, get your initial joining, you want to take the opposite rope that's across and you're going to just untwist it a little bit so that you can basically weave the loose strands back through the rope and like I said what you want to do is you want to take the one strand that you're working on okay there is a piece of rope that it's laying right under it's coming out from a piece of rope you want to go over that and then under the rope that's right above that and you're just going to turn your whole work over and you're going to repeat the same thing over and over again until you get to the end of your rope just about. Now, Pop would go straight to the end of the rope. Of course, he was doing it for, you know, boating purposes and clothesline purposes and handle purposes. Um, but what we're going to do after we get towards the end is we're going to put 
pull back our extra rope. We're going to add a little hot glue and then we're going to like open it up, put a little hot glue in there, twist it closed. And then we're going to cut all of the extra little pieces left over on there. And then we're just going to twist them together. Okay. Now what you saw me do there for a second was I rolled it between my hands, but I prematurely rolled it. Um, when you're done with both ends, we'll roll it again and I'll tell you all about that. And now I'm just going down to the other end. I'm making sure all of the strands are straight. I am just twisting over. I'm just going to twist in the last few pieces here nice and slow. So I'll twist open, take the rope, put it over the piece that's right above it and under the piece that's above that. And then I twist my work, do the same, repeat the same process with all three ropes. You just want to work around. You don't want to just do one strand all the way till its end because you actually need to work over your other work. Then when you're all done, you take it and you basically put it between your hands and you roll it. And what that does is it helps it lay more naturally. So it looks really pretty. You're going to add some hot glue, cut your ends, and then I rolled it again. And that's it. So here's how it looks, the braided rope uh, braided together, the splicing portion. And here's how the project looks all together. But I hope you guys really were able to learn something. If you are interested in a slower, more in-depth tutorial on the rope splicing, please let me know in the comments down below. But other than that, I think it's a really neat way to get two pieces of rope together. Obviously, there's lots of other ways. This is just pop taught me and I taught you. So I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions at all, go ahead and leave them down there. If you haven't yet, click subscribe. And when you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And as always, you take care. God bless. And we'll see you next time. Bye.